I recently made a realistic Christmas diorama to go in my living room window so that people can kind of walk past on the street and they get to see this kind of nice, almost like toy shop feeling uh, scene. This is the biggest model I've ever made. I normally do Warhammer stuff, so this is also the first time I'm doing anything kind of Hornby or train related. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do a bit of a longer video about how I did it from start to finish. If you have a look in my previous video, I go through a sort of sketching out of what I think that I'm going to go for and why I'm basically doing this. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do this video. It's going to be a long one, uh, so go and get a cup of tea or something like that. I think it's going to be about an hour long, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to see some kind of cool model stuff that you can borrow from or, you know, just watch because you like that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, sit back and enjoy it. I'm going to go flying straight into it. Thanks for watching. So I've just been blocking out sort of what it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be, you know, two inches thick of that. Um, I've skimmed the silver lining off it just so that it, there's never going to be any of that silver stuff sort of peeking through and maybe I can sculpt it a bit easier. Uh, I am going to just film myself uh, pulling the silver off this Recticel stuff. I've used a lot of, um, well, well, I've used two or three different types of this expanding foam, what you call it, board uh, before. And this comes off really easily. So if you want to pull silver off, buy this recti cell stuff. I'll give you an example now. I'm just pulling it off. Just keep it on a very flat surface, like flat as you can. Grab a corner, hopefully this is in shot. <laughs> and then peel it kind of backwards. And this comes off quite easily here. It's quite satisfying. Not all insulation foams. Keeping, come on, it's easy, there you go, in a one -up. Just throw it away. Next one. Whoops. That happens. Just grab another corner. Here we are. There we go, it's ready to go. And this can be built up as the uh, the back sort of uh, cliff, if you like. I'm going to need a bit more, I think, um, just to kind of build it up how big I want it. Um, I have got some spare bits of terrain that I've made that I can probably use for that. Part of the, um, what's it called, the actual train gubbins. Uh, I ordered it on eBay for £60, but then I found someone selling it on Facebook Marketplace. 30 pounds and uh, here it is. So this is the first time I've opened a train set since I was like seven. <laughs> Let's open it up and see what it's all about. Here it is. I mean, it's second hand. It's um, therefore not brand new. Let's have a little open of it. You know, the edges are kind of raggedy on the box and things. I don't mind them getting it for half the price that it sells for in the shop. And here we are. It's even got the package instructions and things. That's cool. I'll give that a read. It might even give you like a, f an, um, a layout to follow. In my kind of research, I've learned that layouts is what you call the kind of setup you can have for a map. You know, in 40K, you know, you'd have a battlefield just so you can buy like a layout, uh, which is like a, basically a printed sort of battle map, if you like. And um, it's got, it tells you where the platforms are and things. Anyway, here, so there's some track going together. It's actually going to be quite big when I see it like that. Let's have a look at the train. That's the star of the show, isn't it? Let's have a little look. So I'll, I'll be honest, it's smaller than I expected. Like, um, but still really nice. Oh, you can't turn the wheels. So the wheels kind of have the pistons working and things. Um, nice. I mean, I th you know, you can pay hundreds of pounds for the trains and... This was 30 quid for the whole lot on, on uh, Facebook. So, uh, you know, I'm happy with that. Just gonna put it there. Hopefully that's not a faux pas in the world of uh, train owning. Um, the, here's a little present wagon. 
So that's going to go around. Yeah, I think I saw online that you can pull them out, which is okay. Not, I mean, you could put other things in there, I suppose. Oh, that's good, because so this kind of modular. So that's Santa's train part of it. Here we have reindeer in transit. Oh, here we go. That's where the reindeer's coming, guys, in case you needed to explain. Uh, and then we've got lots of track. We've got the, whoops, basically like the remote control. So I think you can, um, that's very well in there. Oh, it's already plugged in. So you can control the speed and the direction, I think, with this. Is that supposed to slide and click? I'm not sure how that, is that broken? Hmm. Is that supposed to move? Let's put turn it down. Oh, so you can, oh, that's quite a good design. You can only turn it, change direction when it's actually at like zero throttle, which is actually very clever. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together. Let's see, we'll see how big it is. Let's see if it's gonna fit on my board. So I've just put it together and it's actually perfectly circular, which I wasn't expecting. I'm sure that if you look on here, oh, that's a circular one. Okay, so I think I've actually got a slightly different one coming, which has an oval. But honestly, that's fine. I think we can work with that. Um, yeah, so let's plug it in and get the train going. So I plugged it in and uh, nothing has exploded, which is good news. Um, if you turn this up, it turns the current up to get a red light. I think it's not terrible to do that without, uh, doesn't smell of burning, but it's not something that smells. So odd little cut. Uh, I did try the train and it actually didn't work. So um, I messaged the, what they call the person who sold it to me and they were like, well, it's definitely working. So um, I ended up just having to sort of persevere and uh, I eventually did get it working and then my family came in so I couldn't really record. So uh, that's kind of why I'm doing this one now. <laughs> uh, one of the best ways you can do like uh, flock for your sort of fallen leaves and things is to take actual fallen leaves. So I've got fallen leaves and uh, I'm gonna get some more. And then you dry them out and you put them in your blender and then you can use them as, um, what's the word? Uh, foliage? Just I'll, I'll show you what I mean later. So we've got three leaves and a tissue paper. We'll be using them later. Still in the park and um, yeah, I just want to say like, if you kind of get your first one and it's second hand, you need to turn the power dial like, probably higher than you think, just to like get it moving. I don't know if they seize up after a while or whatever, but uh, definitely it needs to be like right up. I was like tickling it up, expecting it to crawl, but no, you need to put a bit more current through, I think. So I'm back home and uh, the postman's been. Uh, this is this is Santa. Um, he is absolutely tiny, as you might expect. He is so small. He is like smaller than a space marine or an orc. Should I put a, do a size comparison? So here's a size comparison with a Primaris. Uh, I think it's a librarian and an orc. Uh, a lot smaller. So if you're wondering, is there a more expensive hobby available than Warhammer? Yes. Hornby, this guy was eight pounds. He was maybe like 10 pounds, I think, or 15 actually. And then if he's just a low trooper, so I, he was probably two or three pounds. So yeah, Santa has arrived. Something else that has arrived is um, the semi-detached house that I want to make. And it's in a kind of plastic, kind of airfixy feeling kit. Um, I used to make airfix kits as a child. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, here it is. I imagine they want me to use like, what's it called? That plastic cement, polystyrene cement, but I might just use, um, I might just use mitre bond because it just goes instantly and really strong. But windows and doors, not much detail in them. It's more about the shape, I think, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna basically paint these off to try and like look like my house so that it's like um, my house in the in the actual uh, diorama. Something I was thinking of doing as well, because basically when you look at my house, it's gonna, we're gonna put the diorama in the, on the actual window. I was thinking of putting this little, it's actually a Sylvanian's dollhouse in the window, but it actually might be too big. It might be better just to put a platform green with like a little train set in it or something like that. 
Um, yeah, cool. Things have arrived. That's good. Um, I'll send you more info and updates, uh, or record it rather, as it as it happens. So I understand this is a bit of a weird video because I'm flitting around the place a lot, but uh, <laughs> I'm kind of just updating things as as we go along. Um, I got a new job about a month ago, and tomorrow I'm flying to Hamburg for like a business trip, and um, as part of that, uh, I might get some free time. And they've got the world's biggest miniature railway there. And um, here's the website. Uh, it abso looks absolutely insane. Plan your visit, discover the wonder. I mean, our theme worlds, they've got different theme worlds. And like, is there a Christmas one? The history of civilization. What? The model rail. I mean, let's just have a look. Facts and figures. I mean, the track system this this is absolutely amazing <laughs> like where's the i'm sure they had a video let's go back to the home page here we go video wonderland in five minutes whoa look at this guy he looks like a guy I used to work with no way was that the millennium falcon it's not letting me full screen but um all i'm saying is look at it so yeah, I'm going to go and visit and I'm going to try and uh, get some inspiration from it. I mean, I say that, ooh la la, I say that basically I want to just go and look at the trains, don't I? <laughs> right, cool. Uh, I'll let you know when I'm in Hamburg, if I get the visit. The bit that is meant to be my house has arrived. Uh, it's down here. I've built it. Um, it's a really nice model. I like it. I've spray painted the, uh, the iron... What they call drain pipes separately. I haven't put any windows in so I could spray it. Yeah, so I think the first bit I'm going to tackle is the roof. Uh, just so that if any bits dribble down, I can deal with them. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually got quite a bit of detail in the tiling. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and take advantage of that as best as possible, as you, you, I recommend you do with models. So I'm basically going to give it a grey coat. A, a, a kind of dark gray coat and then a wash of black and the black will just go into all those recesses and sort of make it a bit more interesting i don't want to a lot of model railways that i've seen have very flat colors uh, just for simplicity i think but i'm going to try and make use of the model uh, to look better basically <laughs> so i've uh, kind of done a little test layout here how it might look got a little cave on the left got a kind of obelisk in the middle and I'm just going to build that up with the foam board, uh, the insulation board. This is my son bought this and I'm not going to use that. Um, here is the house in situ. I'm going to kind of have some muddy track kind of coming towards there, I think. Um, train gone off over there. And I'm just going to build layer, layer by layer with the insulation foam uh, to try and create some kind of, of that rocky texture, I think. How I'm going to approach it in terms of like the geography of the... Um, um, of the rock and things I'm going to have a few rocky outcrops here um, I'm going to build up layer by layer and I'm just going to use straight insulation board but kind of higgledy piggledy a bit as well um, and the hope will be um, that I can then use the what's it called sculptor mold to kind of build mud on top of those you know sometimes you get rocks that are kind of just like uh, they've got mud on them and that's what the mountain is it's basically like a big muddy rock and I'm going to try and build something like that. I'm not sure what angle to put this on. Maybe something like that just to break up the lines a bit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start clagging down these, I think. To do it, I'm going to use something I found when I was converting my van. It's called Stixol. And uh, it's really cheap and it's really powerful and it's really easy to use. I'm actually going to do something I saw in another video recommending. And you basically draw with a pencil everything uh, on, the, on the board. Uh, I'm going to actually do the terrain before I put the track down. I'm not gonna put anything on there, but I'm just gonna um, do the terrain and then I'm gonna put the track on the terrain and then I'm gonna do the ballast, I think. So I haven't glued anything, uh, I've glued these down, sorry, but I haven't glued any of these rocks down, but hopefully you can see the sort of thing I'm thinking of in terms of like, <clears throat> excuse me, building up a kind of bit of a featureful rock face. I'm gonna start sticking some of them down now. So a little update. Um, I have actually glued some of the rocky uh, outcrops down. Uh, it's quite sturdy, that stuff. I mean, I could probably lift the whole thing up by one of these now. Yeah. 
sets really well, going quite quickly. Uh, check it out, sticks all. Uh, anyway, you can see what I'm trying to think of doing, building up this kind of rockiness. And then we're gonna basically <clears throat> either mod podge or what's it called? Sculpt the mold in the gaps to kind of recreate where mud would go. Um, yeah, that's about it really, I think. I'm gonna avoid putting spray paint on polystyrene because it just totally kills it. Um, but that would be a good way to just to paint things on mass. You can see here, I'm gonna build up some craggier stuff like that. So I've actually got to go to bed now because I've got a flight at six in the morning, a taxi at four in the morning. Oof. Right, cool. Hopefully the next bit that you'll see will be me in Hamburg looking at some railways. So here I am in Hamburg, but the bad news is that the Railway Museum has, I'm sorry, it's called Miniature Wonderland, actually has like much stricter guidelines for COVID than like everywhere else. So everywhere else you need to show a QR code that shows that you're double vaxxed. But at the Miniature Wonderland, they need to show proof of like a negative test, um, which you don't need to even travel with. You don't even need that to get on the planes, but you need to get a Miniature Wonderland apparently. So uh, yeah, I'm basically gonna be uh, not going. So I didn't get to uh, see the miniature Wonderland, but I'm back home now and I'm basically starting to paint up uh, the house. I'm using some Citadel paints, black tempo or contrast. And contrast paints are designed to kind of give a good base color, but also just go into the recesses and basically give you free highlighting. So you can see here, I'm literally just putting this on with very little kind of uh, care and attention, I suppose. And it's, uh, Doing a good job of highlighting some areas and you know, the recesses. So yeah, I'm just going to continue and do this. So I've done a lot of uh, sticking of uh, foam board to try and create this rocky effect. Uh, I've reused some bits that have already got black on them. Um, that's what that blackness is, like some old hills that I wasn't going to use. Um, yeah, and I'm just going ahead and clagging stuff on. I'm onto my second tube of sticks all. It's like a six pounder tube. I'm going to go ahead and just show you the technique that I'm using uh, to stick stuff on. So um, with the foam board, I'm kind of just getting a flat piece, if you like. Let's say for example, this one. Um, and because I'm just going to be sticking it on almost like a fascia, I just want to get that, lose that uniformity. So just using my fingers, just like breaking up, oops. Don't want to do it too much. Just breaking up that surface. And uh, pretty tough to be honest. But if your fingers are strong enough, you can do it. <clears throat> there you go. And there you got a kind of rocky bit of surface too. And you know what? That took two seconds. I didn't have to wait for plaster to uh, set or anything like that. Um, and then I'm going to just kind of work out what orientation it's going to be best in. Um, maybe something like that. Yeah. So then you just got these sort of proud surfaces there. Is that in shot? Yeah. So I'm basically just going ahead and squeezing some of this on. So for some reason the clear is a lot more, what's the word? Gloopy? Runny? Comes out a lot quicker than the other ones. So yeah, just stick that on and then watch this. This is just going to go straight up. What was the orientation? Was that right? That's better. Yeah. And then that just goes on. Give it a bit of pressure and move it. And there you go, it's in place. That's gonna go rock solid. Like some of these other ones um, that I've glued on. Like, you know, you can pretty much nearly lift the entire piece from them. It's super solid stuff. Sticks all. <laughs> it really does stick all. I used that on my camper van a lot and uh, it's really, really good. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue um, getting this side done because as you can see, you can still see a lot of the polystyrene. 
This side's pretty much done. The square's where the house is gonna go. Yeah, that's the update on it. So on this kind of other side, I'm gonna put a little bridge. Um, so what I've basically done is drawn around it and then I'm gonna cut in there so they can lodge in after I've removed this material. So yeah, let's give it a go. So here I've uh, chipped out the material. Uh, so that's gonna be like a little kind of rocky lower area. Um, and it's gonna have the bridge on top of it like uh, so, glued in place. I wanted to cut it so that it just wedged in, but I apparently just didn't. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna have a little bit of clearance below it and some rock out the back. I was thinking about making that opening a bit bigger. So there maybe, just to make it a bit more visually interesting. It's a bit too small that, isn't it? Like, uh, so yeah, I might extend that out a bit. Yeah, so that's kind of the update for this side. So yeah, I've extended it a bit and managed to wedge it in there. So the track will go across there. The train will go through here and through the tunnel and then out to the main side. Uh, and I've extended this bit lower bit as well. So that's hopefully gonna match up with the rocks. So that, that feels like one continuous piece of geology rather than its own like little isolated thing. So my uh, brickwork paper has arrived and I've started chopping out uh, the windows and things so that it's in shape in the right place. I've basically done it by trial and error and basically folding it over and then moving on a bit and then doing the next bit. So I'm just going to chop all the doors and windows out and um, then stick it on. So a little update. Um, I'm pretty much done with the main structure of it all. Um, you can see where the track's going to go around there. This is basically my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made a little perch for it and tried to carve some of those in. I'm not sure how it's going to feel scale wise, but yeah, that's done. Yeah, been watching some um, documentaries and films. Um, so I'm going to just basically go ahead and get some sculptor mold on the go. Whoops, something just dropped off. <laughs> what dropped off? What's this? That's a bit of sculptor mold, which is interesting stuff. Some of this has been on for two days and it still feels a little bit wet. I don't know if it just never loses that. Maybe it's just the consistency of it. Um, you can see I've started filling in some of the gaps already. Some gaps I'll leave. Um, I'm probably going to try and spray paint it so I need to cover as much of the polystyrene as possible because it'll just melt uh, if I don't. I'll use some PVA glue to do that as well. So yeah, there's an update on this right now. So I didn't get to go to the Hamburg thing but I'm in the Centre for Life in Newcastle where I live and uh, there's just some amazing Lego stuff which is kind of a cheap replacement for it, I suppose, but yeah, have a look at this. So here it is, a couple of days after I've um, done all the sand and done a, two coats of uh, it's a called scenic cement, and I'm just kind of testing to see how well things are stuck on, and it's all stuck on pretty well to be honest. I'm using this as a car detailing brush for like washing fancy cars. Um, yeah, it seems pretty good. There's a bit there to come off, but so the next stage. I like those big stones stuck on, that's good. Um, the next stage is to, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of the loose debris and then basically spray paint it. I'm gonna manually paint, I think, in the tunnels, some black paint, um, just to protect the, my, my big fear with the spray painting is that the spray paint will get into small holes like that and then just basically melt the polystyrene within and maybe cause it to, collapse but i think it's going to start to look i think it just looks very messy right now and it's going to start to look a bit more like what it's supposed to once it's got the gray undercoat on i'll have to take the tracks off and can take the house out of the way yeah so the whole thing is going to go gray um just to prime it just so that things are stuck it will stick to a better paint and glue I have just noticed that I haven't really stuck much sand to this bit, so that's going to look a bit different and, in my opinion, worse. Um, 
Yeah, so anyway, prime all grey. And then where there's basically mud going to be, so on flat surfaces where, you know, nature has been able to put some mud on it and it stays, put them brown. Um, there'll be some bits more brown than others. Um, then I'll sort of dry brush the brown and the, and the grey to give it a bit of texture. And I think at that stage, once dry brushing happens, the, the thing's just going to transform, really pop. Um what I will say is, as well as doing like flat surfaces brown, I'm going to do it with an airbrush. I'm also going to paint bits where you might reasonably expect mud to run. I've done that with other bits of mine, um, and it looks really good. It really looks natural. So I'll show you guys that soon. So it's two or three days since uh, I last put the scenic cement on it, and uh, it's stuck really well. It's all really, really firm. That's just good news, even the little bits on there. They're gonna look really good when they're dry brushed. So now I'm basically gonna hit it up with some plastic primer. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that can melt the polystyrene. So I'm not gonna to be too vigorous in there. I have PVA'd it all. Um, you can see some of the tracks sort of pattern on there. Uh, but yeah, basically just gonna hit it with this stuff after I've shaken it up. All right, here you go. Okay, so you can see it's starting to get the brown and the white together, and it's going to give it just a really good layer for like adhesion to happen to with the rest of the paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, shake it the can a bit more because I think it could come out better, and then uh, finish it off. So I finished spraying it. That's one entire can uh, on there currently. As you can see, it's blended in all the sandy bits and the white bits quite nicely, so you can see it looks like one sort of uniform piece of. Uh, terrain um, I like some of the texture that brings out these are the bits that will start hitting with browns so any of the muddy bits will be browns and also any of the recesses where you might find mud is likely to sort of naturally run we'll go down there and then we'll dry brush it with stone again I might actually get another tin of spray paint just to get these kind of bits that have missed um, I'll see if I can get one by tomorrow I'll do it but if not then I'll probably just leave it like that so yeah, I've just checked on Amazon and I can get another can of it. And I think that's a good thing because they're a little bit unsightly. And people in the window are going to be viewing it from this angle. And I really don't want, especially kids looking down from below. It's going to be a lot of white there. Uh, I just wanted to point out as well, the like if I hadn't PVA'd all this, this would have just been melted right now. So I'm really happy that I did. That's totally worked really well. Um, there's some other little nukes where I think you can see it's melting a bit. Uh, what's going to happen, but I'm hoping the main structure is strong enough to basically avoid that being catastrophic. Uh, so yeah, that's that. So it's all had its second spray paint coat, and you might notice here, I've got a wooden baton running. Um, I just kind of got sick of that curve, it was like, it was like that, and um, it was kind of noticeable. However, addressing that, and it's still wet, the glue I'm using, addressing that has meant that it's basically created this sort of split in the terrain which isn't the end of the world um i'm actually just going to spray it and it'll just be like a big crack a fissure in the rock which is quite a natural thing to happen anyway isn't it so hopefully it'll look good um yeah i've also primed the bridge down here um and if you're wondering why everything's gray it's literally just priming just so that the next stuff that i put on has a uh, good adhesion uh if you just put like airbrush paint on the like whatever medium you're using it'll just come off often and this will give just good adhesion so uh yeah the next step is the airbrush after i've uh, sprayed this little crack with this i'm uh, gonna be a bit silly and do it indoors but it's only like one so yeah so there you go i've just quickly addressed it you can see it's still wet but it's gonna dry quite nicely and actually create like a, a nice little feature there which is pretty good. Um, down here you can see uh, it's still kind of wet, but that's the Wilkinson sampler pot that I'm gonna be using. I think it's close enough to use as a kind of same color as this. I might regret that, maybe it's a bit darker, 
Maybe I'll add a tiny bit of white to it just to lighten it up. Because basically what I'm going to do next is with the airbrush, um, anything that looks muddy or is going to look muddy, just hit that with browns. So any of these little surfaces here, uh, make it look muddy. And then afterwards I'm going to hit it with uh, some parts of lighter brown so it looks like you get the texture of the mud and that's going to have grass and things on it. But also some grey so that it looks like um, just really old mud that you see on, on rock faces. Uh, it looks good. I've done it on other things. I'll, I'll, I'll show an image to there, my other videos where I've done that. So, yeah, let's get the airbrush on and go. So, there's a little box I made for my uh, air compressor for my air gun. It's a long time since I've used any of it. I don't even know if the, the actual airbrush is in here. I'm not sure if this was the one that was good or rubbish. There was one that was clogging a lot. Um, seems to be only one in here okay so i guess i'm using this one um but yeah i recommend getting one you can get these for like 50 quid or so uh, i've got a few other airbrush videos if you want to have a look at them uh, and a little handy box like this just helps you store it and things like that i'm going to be using vallejo model air just some brown colors fortunately my 40k armies are all colorful like tyranids and stuff like that got some natural colors yeah, black, just two brands. I'll basically be using a lot of the, ooh, what's this, yellow, yellow olive. Is that brown? <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> hope so. Anyway, I'll probably just use lots of mahogany. Maybe some of this mixed in as well. Um, yeah, so I'll get a, a little extension cord so I can actually reach and then uh, start getting some brown on there. And I will add, um, once we've got the brown on there, we get, then get to my, my favourite bit of the whole thing where it's going to start looking good, is airbrushing the grey on. Um, it just br makes the whole thing look so good. Like, this is all really craggy, but it's all like real geometry craggy. That's not a good explanation. It looks craggy because it is craggy, not because it's been coloured craggy. Um, that's also probably not a good explanation, but it's the one that you get. You'll see what I mean, uh, hopefully in a few minutes. some paint. Now to be totally honest it is not flowing very well uh, and it seems to be spluttering quite a bit so this is going to be kind of a bit messy but I'll see what I can do. Guess what I can do. I think I might need to actually just increase the pressure on the uh, on the dial on here so you can tell it basically what demand you want and um, it'll fly a bit more freely if the pressure's higher but it can get too high. Um, this is also jamming open. <laughs> it's rubbish equipment but uh, it's been alright for me over the, the years. Let's see if that's any better with the higher pressure. It should come out a bit more. Well, I'm just gonna, to, just gonna have to plot on with this and I'll uh, cut to when it's a bit more. Okay, so a bit more progress. What's actually helped is because um, these airbrush paints have been literally sat around for how long? Must be like the best part of a year. And they're probably a bit thick, like they're, they're sealed and things, but you know, a bit of moisture can escape. So using my uh, very pro baby water bottle here. I'm just putting some water in just to make sure that everything that goes through the brush is a bit thinner so it comes out a bit more freely and that seems to be kind of working so see it's actually sort of coming out a bit happier, a bit thinner but good enough for me to be honest so yeah I'm just going to crack on get a bit more of this going let's put a bit more in Got it. Get all that mud and stuff done. Something I'll also add is that um, you might notice. Let me take it off the stand. 
Oh, actually, I'll just point it out. So as well as doing like the surfaces, I'm doing sort of bits where mud might feasibly run down. When we dry brush that, that's going to look really good uh, and quite natural. So I've cleaned the airbrush out and I finally managed to get a bit of good flow going. So I just wanted to uh, put the video on again so you can see what it looks like when it's actually flowing. No, not perfect, but uh, you kind of get the picture. So it doesn't look like much, but you can kind of see where the muddy bits are going to be. I also got some yellow on the go just to make some uh, some of these sort of sandy looking piles a bit more, you know, a bit of that natural colour variety around here. I actually started running out of brown here, so we're going to have to do something about that. Um, yeah, here we go. So I was just going to dry brush on top of it, but I think I'm actually going to... Uh, put a wash on so that it goes a lot into the recesses just a dark wash It'll just be some black paint mixed with some white uh, some water Just to really get in some of the nooks and crannies and sort of shadow places uh, and then I'll do the the dry brushing uh, So yeah, I'm just gonna give that a chance to dry. There's still some wet spots I'm really confused by these little wet pockets. I don't know what they are Strange, but they'll dry um, So I'll probably get like 20 minutes and then hit it with some sort of black wash basically some cheap black paint mix with some water get some shading on the go that'll also help me use the uh wilco's paint as um a dry brush sort of yeah hopefully it'll it'll all, all will be revealed good morning so um it's all dried it's the next day and it looks like that wilkinson's paint is definitely a bit darker than the um than the grey that we've primed it with so it's just gonna look rubbish if we dry brush it with that it's just gonna look weird to be dry brushed with a darker shade you always want to dry brush lighter really uh so i'm actually going to use this grey it's very light i'm just going to lightly dry brush the surface just to kind of bring it to life this is my favorite bit because this is when you really get to see basically i think how how good the end piece is going to look it's very lightly on the stone not on, a tiny bit on the mud to imply there's pebbles there um and then I'm probably, especially if this looks very light, if the whole piece just looks very light, put some earth wash on it just to make dirty puddles and things like that, just to bring the, whole, the tone of the whole thing down. Right, so I'm going to have a go with that now. So if this is your first time seeing dry brushing, it's basically uh, getting rid of all the paint on your brush so there's only a tiny bit left. And then just the, those tiny little flecks will um, go onto whatever it is you're painting. And to get it off, well, to get it on, you just dip it in a tiny bit, and then to get it off, you just brush it on a bit of paper, and then you go on here. So um, I've got a very soft brush here. I get a feeling these might clag together, and that'll be rubbish. I've also got a Citadel dry brush, um, which you would hope was really good, because it was about £10. Um, I'll go ahead and give the Citadel dry brush a go first. So a bit of paint, get it off your bristles, like a lot. Less is more, I find. And then, I'll go ahead and just start, make sure it's off, just uh, bringing out some of those high points. And it'll break some off, and that's okay. I could have done with more paint on there, to be honest. Let's get some more. Quite a lot more. There we go. It takes, with each paint, it takes a bit of time to get used to sort of how much actual paint you need on it. Um, and it's very easy this you can just um, I mean you can do it with the kids or something as well if you want as long as they <clears throat> don't put too much paint on the brush it shouldn't like spoil everything <laughs> so I'll zoom in and well, I'll just take it off because I'm going to zoom very good you can kind of see that starting to bring out some of that uh, geometry a bit 
with colour. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the whole piece, uh, where there's stone. So I've done a few sections here, and so that's what it looked like before. And now it kind of looks like this, which is a bit more natural looking, a bit more rocky. You can see how, what I meant by with the brown and then the dry brushing, it makes it look like natural sort of just muddy places rather than just flat mud, you know, it looks like there's some rock action going on. Quite happy with how it looks. I think it looks better on in reality than on camera. Um, but yeah, just got to cut on and do the rest of it. In the interests uh, of time saving, I've actually just switched to a big normal paintbrush. The bristles are a bit stronger, and so you're more likely to break stuff off. But um, yeah, it's actually just really quick for getting stuff on there. So, right. oops. <laughs> stuff coming off but yeah you can see that now it's just highlighting stuff like really quickly uh, and because it's a big piece and I've got other things I want to do in my life <laughs> I'm probably gonna uh, just go ahead and do the rest with this this big brush uh, oh but too much on there but that's okay but a natural variance we'll call it yeah all good all good so uh, I've done the dry brushing on everywhere. I think it looks pretty good. Um, hopefully you quite like it too. Now next I'm gonna put PVA down and I'm gonna use my Static Grax applicator, very cheap old one. And I'm gonna basically start putting some grass on places. Um, yeah, let's have a go at that. So it's still wet, but uh, this is kind of how it's looking now with some Static Grass. Um, pretty happy with how it's going. Basically just clag some PVA on. And then you can just sprinkle it on there to be honest, it'll probably look fine, but I've got like a static applicator so it makes it stand up. Uh, I actually had some new stuff and some old stuff and I've just mixed them together to create like an, an irregular mix that'll go further. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead, what's the time now? 5 to 10, yeah, I'll probably finish off the whole main structure of this and then uh, call it a night. So the flocks dried um, and I've decided to put the, the train together. Uh, I got some extra carriages just to kind of, um, so we can put sort of Christmasy, Christmassy things in them basically. Um, I think I quite like how the flock looks, it all looks quite natural and stuff like that. Uh, the next stage is going to be the track, so basically they, they come with little holes, so pinning them in place and then getting glue on and then um, yeah, putting the ballast down. I've never done ballast before, but I think it's straightforward. I think you just like um, PVA it in place. Uh, I quite like this train going around. It just sort of brings it to life a bit. I'll slow it down a bit. It's um, This is a very cheap, small train that I'm using, so it, I think it wheel spins quite a lot. And it struggles around the corner. So here we go, here's a little drive-by. Got some shipping containers, reindeers in transit, and then some uh, empty wagons. I quite like the shipping container because um, basically so much of... Well, oh, it stopped because I haven't got much throttle on. Yeah, it seems to struggle there a bit if it's on... I think maybe the track's a bit dirty around the corner or something, but we turn it up. You'll see how much wheel spin happens when it's on like high speed. Yeah, I love those wheels spinning. Like, if you look here, how much the wheel spin happens. Really struggling there. Anyway, yeah. Next stage is to basically ballast the the rails down, get that in place. I'll probably do that later on tonight. So um, I asked my five-year-old what color we should do the bridge, and she said a ready, a ready brown, like the Golden Gate Bridge, which I thought was pretty good for a five-year-old to know about. Um, and I'm just basically like grey primer, putting on some Citadel uh, Blood Angels Red. Uh, I haven't got a huge amount left, but it'll be fine. Once that's done, I'll just give it a little silver dry brush and it'll all be good. Uh, I'm also going to put some tufts on here. What's good about these little bits where 
say there's white stuff revealed or stuff's come off we can just cover it with some tufts these I made myself literally just put a sponge in a, a blender and then put green um, what's the word paint on it and they dry really quickly and they look pretty effective like sort of stick them in places they look like nice little bits of shrubbery stick them around anywhere just stick some glue on them they do the part I'll get some of the less angular ones just to sort of look more realistic but yeah so yeah bridge and tufts so the bridge has been painted I think it's gonna look quite good in there and uh, just gonna put that on the radiator to dry and then yeah time to get some of these little bad boys on so for these just spilled them out a bit I'm just looking for some irregularly shaped ones that one will do um, I'm just gonna get my PVA put a blob don't know here that'll do it's quite a healthy blob really and then um, I'll stick it on there obviously that glue is gonna dry clear and that amount will give it a really good bit of uh, maybe I'll just put it back a little just to get that little stone so there you go and then uh, do I think less is more with these you can do too many so I'll just be doing a little sprinkling of them on little ledges and things so I'll put a few on as you can see uh, another good technique you can do here is basically hide your sins so there's some white bits here oh it's got loose now white bit there uh, I've already hidden a bit there you can just stick a bit of uh, this foam on and it'll hide it and it'll look like a bit of natural kind of vegetation so that's what I'm gonna do so the bridge is now dry uh, the next thing to do is just to take some of the kind of bit of primer off at the edge off them with some washers I'm gonna use some uh, Agrax Earthshade and Norm oil on the bottom as well just to make it look a bit more dirty and realistic so this is dried next bit I'm gonna just get some metallic uh, paint and dry brush the edges a bit so it looks like metal so the bridge is now in place I think it's quite good um, I'm now gonna hold down the track what I started doing actually is uh, using mitre bond which is just like super glue that you can like, instantly set with this ax uh, activator accelerant stuff um, <clears throat> yeah I've done it a few places and it's uh, very strong so I'm just gonna put the track down and then start getting some ballast on there so I've just poured some ballast on and then I'm just gonna use a brush I think this is what they do to sort of spread it out so that we can still see the slit what they called it's not slippers the sleepers uh, as we go oh, yeah look out that's pretty cool isn't it looks the part they put too much on this little spot but uh, there you go you live and learn um, yeah I'm just going to continue doing that I uh, see a problem with the glue that I used there it's a bit uh, what's the word also my brush is wet so it's kind of but yeah it's looking alright now huh? yeah I'm just going to spread it out and then so there you go I've spread it out I think it looks, it looks okay I'm not entirely sure why but everyone else seems to put pure alcohol spray on so I'm going to do that before I put my glue on. Ooh, kind of makes it soggy. Darker, okay. So, wow, it stinks. <laughs> Still not sure why I've done it, but I have. And uh, now I'm going to put some glue on. Now with my 50-50 uh, water and uh, glue. Oh no, it's got some blue food colouring in it or something. Okay, we'll see if that <laughs> makes an impact. <laughs> I think there's actually a bit too much glue in there as well. But anyway, there we go. Let's put it on eh? Yeah, I think that's a bit too gluey. I'm gonna go water it down a bit more.
So excuse the noise, but uh, I'm gonna make a little pile of just ballast here, so it looks like maybe it's part of like you know the yard or something where they've uh, administered the ballast from. I don't know how that's gonna stick, but okay, I think it kind of looks cool. You do often see that by rail sides, don't you? Just little piles of stuff. Well. Got plenty extra, so why not? Wow, it's way too thick. Try again. Maybe a bit too watery this time, we'll find out. Just had a little mini crisis, I totally forgot that I need to put power on the rails. And I've done the entire thing, so uh, yeah, hopefully that's gonna work. I get a feeling maybe the connection won't be so good. It's probably terrible what I've done, but yeah, all, all the ballast is now done. It's gonna look good when it's dry, I think. Cool, let's leave that to dry overnight. So it's 24 hours since I put the ballast down and um, it's really well set. Something I've noticed is the train that doesn't seem to run particularly well where ballast goes all the way to to the edge. So I've basically just with this pin been going ahead and kind of picking out what I can uh, as the train goes around. Um, just to try and kind of, uh, I've been careful not to like short the tracks or anything. Just like basically like, Almost like flossing your teeth. But well, here it comes. I and mean, that's actually been very effective to um, to make it run smoother. So yeah, I'm just kind of getting those little bits out of the way to help it have better contact as it goes around. Some bits are fine. Some bits aren't. Oh yeah. I'll stick some more wagons on it and see if the, now with the ballast if it has much better traction or not maybe there's a bit more resistance on the track who knows I've thought about putting weights on the actual locomotive as well just so that it actually has more traction as it goes around paradoxically that might work okay let's give it a go So the ballast has had two days to set and um, it's set really well to be honest, even though lots of little bits are good. I definitely put too much on like up to the walls of the railing. Uh, I had to scrape a lot away. Sometimes it gets stuck, but anyway, it's getting on. And I, I think it's time to add foliage to be honest. And um, I knew that I was gonna do trees. So I've got trees, but I'll go into that in a second. But I've also got myself some heather tufts. I saw these on uh, Luke's APS's w w website, Geek Gaming. I don't know if you watch videos on terrain and things, but Luke's APS, uh, I don't know him, but he seems like a great guy. And now he's got the website, Geek Gaming Scenics. And uh, I bought the snow flock from there and these little heather tufts. And uh, I've put a couple in place and I think they look really good. You can maybe see the line where they join a bit. I might put some glue on just to keep them in. They are adhesive, but like, Actually, it's stuck on pretty well. Maybe that's fine. After some <coughs> scenic cement. So yeah, I'm basically just gonna go ahead and add uh, some tufts of heather around the place. Just to kind of add a little bit of variety color wise and um, hopefully bring it to life a bit more. And I also, what I'm thinking as well is on these hilly bits, if I have some heather, 
sort of growing out and then the snow flock will fall on it beautifully and hopefully put a shadow below it where the snow didn't fall that's the plan anyway um for trees i'm using sea foam um this is used a lot for trees i honestly think that the scale is a little bit off for these like if i snap one so if you imagine like that would be a, as big as i'd want to go i think for trees for this um, but still, I'm probably going to spray them black because they're a little bit too light in colour. And also, I don't know if you remember, very early on I did a video where I was collecting leaves. These are the same leaves that I collected. Basically going to crush them up really small. And then spray these with varnish to make them sticky. And then sprinkle some dead leaves on. And I'll also, wherever I decide to put the trees, um, I'll put leaves on, on the floor around it. Just to break things up and make it look a bit more natural. I'm probably going to avoid putting it to the extremities like here. It's just going to make it, unless I can take that tree off, which isn't a terrible idea. But basically, I don't want to make it a pain in the bum to carry around even more than it is. <laughs> With every bit of glue and stone I add, it just gets heavier. And um, the flocks can probably add to the weight as well. So, so the house is going to go there. Maybe I'll put the tr a tree here or here. That's a good place because it kind of obscures that corner a bit yeah maybe a tree there i've got um, to install them i'm basically gonna have to make an initial hole with uh this pin and then make it bigger with like toothpicks or something like that yeah so so i'm gonna do this evening once the kids are in bed once peacetime reigns gonna uh put a lot of heather down put some in the open here and things why not and then um and then i'll look to do some trees finally So I've actually added a lot of um, heather, and I quite like it to be honest. It's um, yeah, it's looking good I think. So that's going to give an extra bit of character to it. I think I kind of like the idea of it being a sort of Scottish Highland or something like that, or somewhere they, in Iceland or something where these tough plants grow. So next I'm going to do leaves. I'm going to basically crush, grind up loads of leaves. And looking at the kind of color palette, I'm looking to sort of work out what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to only use this sparingly. Because it'll just look a bit mad with loads of orange or yellow everywhere. Uh, this one, will, this one's quite dark, so I'll use that one sparingly. And this one will kind of be the main leaf one. So I'm going to go ahead and just grind this up in my hands. And create basically a powder, which is going to be our scale uh, leaves for here. And also on the floor. So yeah, pretty much literally, as I said, just going to crush these leaves, so I don't want to stalk so much. Let's have a look here, and then um, crush it up. If you've got anything you can use to grind things really small, then use them. That's a bit of suit for making a fire, by the way. Um, yeah, just, I mean, they're even, those are small, but just too big. You really need it like powder. And I think a little bit is going to go a long way as well. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and work away at that, make it tiny. So, there you go. I've got a lot of little uh, tiny crumbs of leaf. And I think they're going to do okay for, for my purposes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and varnish one of the trees now. And then we'll stick some of that to it. So, that's been sprayed. Now we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle. Wow, it's really potent smelling stuff, actually. Woo! Should have opened a window. And sprinkle it on there. You can't really see it that much. <clears throat> I did get some yellow as well. Maybe you'll be able to see that better. 
yeah, I think that's a bit more visible because it's a bit different, more different color wise. That's cool. Yeah. So let's go and stick this in uh, the diorama and see how it looks. Let's stick a bit more on the back actually. It's fine. So I'm kind of thinking it's going to go here. Yeah, it's going to look good, isn't it? Which way around? Maybe that way around and then some foliage around it. Yeah. So what I'm going to have to do now is get my pin, start making a hole for that and then gradually kind of uh, make the hole bigger so that it'll actually fit in there. But yeah, pretty happy with that. So let's make a start. The um, Wow, it's really hard. I think that might be the, uh, well, it's a combination of everything, isn't it, really? PVA, um, what else is on there? That Mod Podge stuff, a bit of Sculptor Mold. But I'm glad it is hard, to be honest, because uh, it kind of bodes well for it staying in there. I'm going to try and widen it with a little screwdriver. i find my hole first, don't I? Is that it? Yeah. Just use that as a kind of drill. I mean, if you've got a proper drill bit, then by all means do it. But I don't. So, let's see if that'll go in. I think it's going to go in. Which side looks better? I think maybe that side. Mm -hmm. A bit bigger. Wow. Well, didn't want it to go that far, but it did, so. Oh, it's too big. Anyway, that will go in. Bit of glue. There you go, there's our first tree. Think that I think that's looking okay, isn't it? I like the uh gonna get some more foliage around here, I think. So yeah, for this bit, I'm just gonna make it a bit sticky. Hopefully it won't melt anything with a varnish. And then just try and put some of these very small leaves on underneath. Just make it look like uh that's kind of a bit natural. Kind of autumnal and wintry. It's looking okay, isn't it? Stick it all down a bit more. A bit more, a bit down the bottom. These don't melt everything. <laughs> so yeah. Well, overall we have a pretty good looking tree, I think. With some leaves that have fallen. And kind of covering that scene a little bit there. So next I'm going to do uh, basically another couple of trees, I think. I don't want to overdo it with the trees. Excuse that. Um, yeah, let's have a little go. So we've got some more trees now, some foliage. I've got them, that, that one there. I was thinking about maybe adding another one. I really want to get this nice effect of trains sort of coming out there next to that tree and, and toddling off. Um, yeah, three trees, is that enough? Too many? Hmm, don't know. I'm, actually, I'm gonna leave this back area like very open because I've got a feeling that I might like expand stuff there Ooh, another day. Maybe that's a different project. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of happy with how this is looking up front. I think the snow is gonna look really good on those trees. And on that subject, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some snow on stuff, basically. Don't know how to, I should probably avoid the rails or maybe do something to help the rails not get covered. Um, I don't want to lose a lot of the nice sort of texture, so I'm probably just going to cover the bits that don't look that impressive with uh, snow, to be honest. Um, like the corners, the corner, for example, here. Cover that up. Um, yeah, so I think I'll make a start with that. I think that's basically done, you know. You could, you know, I could call this, a, call this done now, but and it's a summer scene, but then I want to... Um, do some snow basically so hopefully it doesn't ruin it you can always ruin things can't you but you gotta try it was always gonna be a Christmas thing so I'm just gonna have to go ahead and do it um, I'll do small bits at a time so that we can see sort of what's how it's how it looks basically so I think I'm actually gonna start with this topmost area for snow um, and then I can kind of work down we could even have very little on the bottom and more snow at the top, so it kind of takes into account altitude a little bit. 
Um, and I'm basically just gonna cover it in, well, what is it, matte C scenic sealant, which is, what I've actually done is expanded it by just doing like 10 to one PVA with water with a dash of, um, it's a gold washing up liquid. I think that's basically how you make this stuff anyway. So we're gonna hit that on there. And then I'm basically gonna get a sieve with, uh, please excuse the washing over there. I'm gonna get a sieve with the uh, flock in and then basically start dishing it out on there. So let's set the camera up and uh, squirt, squirt, squirt and get things set up. And then hopefully the next thing you'll see is some lovely snow going on there. All right then, let's get going with the snow in. So, if you don't know, you really need a sieve for this because it'll uh, it'll come out in balls if you don't. Wow! So I think it looks really good, but I'm kind of conscious that I really don't want to just overdo it. Um, maybe this side could do with a bit more. I love how it sort of sticks to itself, apparently. Really good. I'll just add a bit more. I mean, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? it really, you, you don't need a lot of the stuff to make it look very snowy, apparently. So maybe I'll just continue and do a little light dusting everywhere rather than it being like a full on snow apocalypse. Like, look at that heather and the air. <laughs> I hope I haven't ruined it. Do you think I've ruined it? Leave a comment if you think I've ruined it. <laughs> yeah, let's have a little sprinkling elsewhere. A bit more snow coming down. Honestly, it really covers a lot, you know, just a tiny little one tap of snow. What's happening in the shadow? Sorry about that, but. good see if and how it works i'm just gonna do a really thick bit like in a corner or thereabouts just to see sort of if i can get thick coverage very easily with it i'm just gonna spray this uh on this corner i should really protect that wood so it doesn't get on i put a cereal box on the corner just to protect it from overspill but i want to just get a really thick coating of snow somewhere just to see if it works or not Whoop. wow it's really flying out now It really just hides everything, doesn't it, the snow? I have to keep that in mind, I think. And I'm not sure how much of the PVA is going to seep through and let that... What's the word? Seep through and stay like that. Anyway, let's do a bit of a tree, shall we? So I've sprayed it and then I'm going to wipe the rails just so that they don't, don't have any PVA on them. Then uh, let's have a little look. Wipe those rails again. Yeah, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to work out best to be very selective with like where I put the snow. If I just do it on the whole thing, it's just going to totally obliterate all the detail. And I like some of the colour of the heather and things. And Yeah, let's have a little go of doing the rest. So down here is when I, where I want there to be a snowball fight. Um, so I'm going to make sure there's plenty of snow here. And then I was thinking of even dragging like a finger through the snow, like... With a, or, a, or a pencil so it looks like you know when you're making a snowman you roll it over and it creates like a path in the snow something like that a little bit of de attention to detail uh yeah so let's get some snow here 
Let's see what we'll get going here at our little snowball fight spot. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of just putting it in like one place. I've also just run out of the stuff. I'm just experimenting here and the pin I use for the holes, maybe that could be used to scrape like a path of... You know, as if they've, that's where people will be making the uh, snowman. I think that kind of works. Just worried how much the snow is actually going to just move when I have to move the thing, because I am going to have to move it. So that's, a, that's almost like a bigger one. And then, it behaves oddly, this stuff. That's cool. And then footsteps down here. <laughs> It kind of works. I want to make it look like, you know, on Christmas morning or whatever, these kids have run down the stairs from the house and gone out to play. Because that's what happens, isn't it? These big balls are a pain. Go away. That's from the snowballs. That's the running feet over here. <laughs> and then some just general loitering foot steps. There you go. I think that kind of implies a bit of action happening. Pretty good. Outside the house. Um, I wonder where else I need snow. Do I need some snow here, do you think? Should probably put it on the cliff face. Cl cliff faces look really good with the snow. I'll put some more over here now. I'll record one more bit and that's going to be this tree getting a hit with the cliff around it. I'm just going to make sure there's a lot of stickiness going on. Roll around and then get some snow on there. I'm going to let it just uh, gently come down and not talk. And you guys can watch it build up. There we are. I quite like that. Looks like a nice snowy wintry scene. Right, cool. Um, I'm going to do a bit, few more bits and then come back. So the time's come, I think, to basically finish it and display it. Um, I'm going to start putting the people having a snowball fight here. Basically what I'm doing is put a spot of super glue on and then spraying the bottom of it with accelerant and then putting them in place. And it's pretty solid, to be honest. Mm -hmm. 